This is Ryan from Team Wayfinder, and today we have with us Keith Silverstein, the English voice of Kimi Maurer from the Naruto series, Tom Tanaka from Do Rawara, and from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. A tip of the hat from Speedwagon, like is not. How are you? Doing great. Thanks again for being on the show. Sure, I'm happy to be here. Alrighty, so here's the first question. How'd you get into voice acting? How did I get... Look at Ari with the tough questions. I've got to go back through my memory and remember how this works. Like, I was doing voices uh, when I was a kid. Uh, I didn't ever consider this as a career until my uncle was doing a project where he wanted... It was a kind of like a PBS special. And he'd done all this artwork and he had this poetry to go with it. And he wanted poetry read in multiple different voices. So he called me up. He said, uh, Keith, I know you do a bunch of voices. Uh, if you want to call back on my answering machine... And, um, you know, and, and, and read some stuff in some different voices, you know, maybe I'll cast you in this. And sure enough, I ended up working on it and went to a, a real studio and recorded with, uh, there, were, there was at least a couple other actors there. And, uh, I, I mean, I fell in love with it. So I, as soon as that day was over, I started looking up, like, where can I take classes? How can I pursue this? I mean, I guess I always knew it existed. Um, but I had never, I was kind of spread out in what I wanted to do in life and I hadn't focused on anything in particular. And that was kind of a, a moment that focused me and, and I, I, I was on a, a mission from there forward. Awesome. So what would you say is the most difficult part about voice acting? I think it's the uh, unpredictability. You've got to be really, really flexible uh, in terms of what to expect from session to session. Uh, we're auditioning for things that we don't like if you look if you're doing on camera stuff, you know You're only they're not gonna ask you to do something. That's totally against your character type You're gonna have a certain look and that's mostly what you're gonna be auditioning for but with voiceover. It's the sky's the limit so anything you can possibly do and uh, I mean some people have more versatility than other people but sometimes we go in for a session and we don't even know the name of the show because everything's so secret so we don't know the show we're working on we don't know what character so we're there the clients there the directors there maybe the producers there and and it's like okay here's what you're going to do go and it, so i think that kind of just being ready to be versatile and you know just going for it i i, I mean i think for me that's the hardest that's the hardest part and uh yeah, I'm always a little nervous, like, what are they going to, you know, what's it going to be? It's different if you're doing a character you've been doing for a while or you know exactly what you did at the audition. But a lot of times they throw new things at you just at, at a moment's notice. So I, I think that's probably the hardest part. It's fun, too. It's one of the most fun parts, too. Um, but it, they, you're always put on the spot. If that makes sense. Makes plenty of sense. So what's one of your favorite projects or characters that you've had to record for during your career? Uh, you know, I had one recently that was uh, kind of a big deal for me. I mean, we all have things that, you know, we grew up on or that, you know, we love in one way or another. And uh, one of, for me, I, I watched a lot of anime when I was in my early teens. And uh, one of the shows I really, really loved was uh, Lupin the Third. And uh, so I had a, a couple of buddies that we would just, we just watched movie after movie and series after series. And uh, never thought, I mean, I would have been happy just to work on a project, a, a Lupin the Third project. Never thought I'd get even the opportunity to audition uh, for for that character. And uh, just it was just released not that long ago, but we did something called uh, Jigen's Gravestone, which is a film. I think it's only like an hour long. It's not a super long film. It's on Hulu right now. Um, and I got to play Lupin Third, And that was, for me, like a dream come true. He's just he's one of my favorite characters. The animation in this is beautiful. And I just... It, I, after I recorded it, I kept checking online because it took like six months for it to come out. And I was just like, please come out. please!" Like, they're not going to replace me, right? Because I actually, I was so excited about it and I couldn't announce it and I couldn't say anything. And I was just so hoping, like, please come out. You know when something's too good to be true for you, no matter what it is? Like, that was kind of one of those things for me. So when it came out, I was very happy with it and just uh, excited to get my uh, Blue Jacket Lupin figure as soon as it came out. Awesome. So what was it like being a judge on Perfect Idol? Weird. It was strange. <laughs> um, it was, it was fun. I had a really good time on that. Um, it's weird judging people. And, uh, I, I made a decision in the beginning that I was going to have fun with it. And I tried not to be the Simon, you know, I tried not to be too mean, but, um, but we had to kind of keep it real to a certain degree. And, and we had some fun because, you know, people were supposed to show their talent and then they were also supposed to do some voice acting as well. But then people did really weird things like did the splits or, or, or did a talent that wasn't really a talent. So there was a lot of room to kind of goof, goof on people a bit. And I did that. And I tried to, you know, put out the disclaimer, you know, that I'm, 
I'm not a mean guy. I'm just having fun. But uh, but it was weird because I, I, I don't it's tough judging another actor because, you know, it, it's hard what we do and we put ourselves out there and I really appreciate everybody that submitted. So it is kind of a weird thing to judge people in that in that capacity. And last question. Where's Uh-oh. It? Oh, last question. Oh, my God. Did I get it right? <laughs> what are some tips that you have for up and coming voice actors? Get lots of gigs, make lots of money, work all the time. Um, for up and coming, let's see. Um, God, there's so many. I don't know what tips are. Take classes, act. Um, if you've got, I mean, you've got, you're going to have to eventually get somewhere where you can, because I know people are in all different parts of the country, and you've got, you know, New York, L.A. There's some in uh, in Texas. There's anime in Texas. I don't know how much. I mean, I guess there's voiceover in every city. But if you really want to pursue it, uh, you know, you probably got to be in like L.A. or New York for the most part. But wherever you are, take acting classes as much as as possible. Improv classes work. Listen to commercials. Listen to you know, uh, you know, watch animation. Um, practice all you can and, and and read up on it. There's a lot of there's a lot of great books that will that will really answer all the questions that you have. But my I guess my number one tip would be if you really do it, if you really love it and you really want to do it, I mean, don't do it to like get rich because it, it's a lot of work and and it's you know most people it's not kind of an overnight success and it's also not a thing where you start working regularly and then suddenly you have more money than you know what to do with. It's not one of those kind of careers. So be real about it. And if you love it and have a passion for it, don't give up. I know a lot of people that kind of set markers for themselves. Like, I'm going to try, but if it doesn't happen in six months, I'm going to try something else. Or if it doesn't happen in a year, I'm going to stop. And, and I think with all of acting, if you really love it, I mean, you never know. you got to give it more time. And you got to look at even on-camera actors like, like Morgan Freeman, who I, I don't know what he did earlier in his career, but the, you know, the midlife for him, now he's in everything. So it's kind of if he had given up after a year, I mean, think of how much he's done, you know. So, you know, sometimes it just takes time. So I would say don't give up. That's the main thing. And just just keep keep learning and keep trying and, and uh, you know, keep pushing forward. All right. Well, thanks a lot for being on the show. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. This is Team Wayfinder signing out.